distinguished delegates on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's always a great advantage to speak after DG Sat because whatever you had to speak, he's already covered and covered it so lucidly that you can't do a better job than that. The disadvantage is that you come prepared with something that you're going to speak on and that paper remains inside the pocket because he's already covered it. So what I did was that while he was speaking, I was scribbling something and believe me, I have only this to say. I've noted down three points and this side is blank. So I'm not going to take too much of time. But some very pertinent uh, issues have been raised. I have three, three bullet points which I'm going to cover and cover them very broadly. Firstly, the trends that we see. The challenge today that the CISO faces is not routine hacker. We are talking of APTs. How many of you are fully aware of what, a, what an APT is? Okay, so we have a fair, fairly knowledgeable audience here. And the challenge is that since APT is multinational, multi-group and very, very sustained, the challenge for the CISO is how do you detect it, how do you prevent it, and how you do you mitigate it? It's a great challenge and a great responsibility on the CISO. I would not be wrong to say that the CISO today is more important to an organization than the marketing man. Someone talked about bottom lines, right? I think the CISO of tomorrow will decide the bottom line of a company. And let me qualify this. Because of the IOTs and because of a whole lot of apps which have come in, your business today is all online. And uh, I had a very interesting discussion with the CISO of a very major bank. And I just asked him one very simple question. I said, tell me, your app, when I download on my mobile, it asks for permission for my contact lists. Read SMS. I can understand because you send OTP, so the SMS, you want permission to read the SMS so that it's verified. Why the hell would you want my photograph access, camera access, audio access, speaker access, everything. He had no answer. He looked sleepish and then he avoided the conversation and then he said, so we'll discuss it over lunch. Uh, he never met me during lunch and that's a major bank. Now the point that I'm trying to make is that there are so many apps and especially after demonetization, you'll find that a whole lot of apps were introduced for convenience. While convenience is important, uh, I'm not too sure if from a security perspective, uh, DG Sir would be very happy to endorse them. I'm sure he will not. The issue is that with this kind of surface available for someone to penetrate, and if the CEO is not doing his job, it can have catastrophic implications, firstly on your business or the company because, and not only business, the reputation of the company itself can go down. So you have loss of face, you have loss of confidence in your clients who will you know, not come back to you because they feel that uh, transacting with you have security implications. The other challenge that the CISOs will have today is, we talked about the bot, botnet. Today botnets are available as a service, I would say. I mean, anyone can hire X number of bots and do a lot of things. Uh, launch a DDoS attack, launch, uh, do, do a lot of things. So the challenge of the CISO is great. Another thing which you need to probably uh, look at more seriously than what you're doing is an insider threat. And I'm not talking of malicious insiders. I'm talking of people who inadvertently have been compromised and are blissfully unaware that they are. Like the, the, there, there's a joke which goes around between the two of us that you are either compromised or you do not know that you are compromised. So that is the ground reality today. So where does it leave us? The fact is that a lot of us, a lot of CISOs also are part to, uh, party to that, have outsourced their IT services to a third party vendor. Nothing, nothing wrong in it, very good. But look at two extremes. One is you have a very, very loose SLA, not very strict. So now that is open to 
compromising your networks. Because if he's careless, and if he's not uh, plugged in all the uh, loopholes, you get compromised and your reputation is taken. And if you have a very stringent SLA, then he says, look, I can't provide you 99.997% uh, uptime unless you give me the administrative passwords and unless you give me access to XYZ devices of yours. Only then I can maintain. So it's a double whammy. Either way, you are sunk. Uh, that's a great challenge for a CISO. What must you do? What is your responsibility towards the government of India? As uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Sanjay Bahel mentioned, that any incident or a breach, you are duty bound to report. Now he mentioned that there is a legal penalty. I look at it from a different perspective. Not only it is legally mandated for you to do it, you must do it for other reasons. Unless you tell us that this has happened, we would not be able to carry out the forensics and maybe prevent other organizations uh, in the same sector uh, from being a victim of what has happened to you. So you're duty bound not only by law, but otherwise also as a service to your other uh, colleagues to bring this to the notice of uh, the government. You can either do it to search, you can do it to NCIPC, you can do it to any organization. And yes, he's already covered the issue about residual risk. You need to now understand how to actually calculate the residual risk that you have and take a very uh, conscious call. You cannot plug 100%. You cannot make your networks 100% secure. That's a given. So you need to understand, okay, what is the residual risk that you have? And is it uh, okay to live with it? Three guidelines which the government has, or three initiatives that the government has taken to empower the CISOs. Uh, some of them uh, my colleague has already covered. So I'm going to cover three which possibly uh, can be looked at differently. One is that uh, the government has come out with a guideline that 10% of the IT budget uh, must go towards enhancing cybersecurity. So I think the CISOs can use this as a weapon to walk up to the board and say, look, 10% of this I will use to enhance the cybersecurity, not by computers and not by IT hardware, enhance cybersecurity. And maybe uh, demand for extra budget uh, under this guideline which exists. Uh, we are also looking at a framework, developing a framework where most of the organizations would be able to carry out a self-assessment of their cybersecurity posture. You are hesitant when an outsider comes and does an audit for you, although there are certain panel vendors, but that's once in a while, once a year or whatever. And you would be very, uh, I would say, hesitant to allow an external organization to come and do audit for you. We understand that. So we are setting up a framework where you will be able to carry out this yourself with due anonymity. And wherever you feel that this you can't plug yourself and you require the assistance, both of us are there to uh, bail you out. And we are also looking at enhancing the uh, brand equity of a CISO. Today CISO has the requisite qualification which he has. But there is a thought in the government which uh, feels that we need to have CISOs given additional certification, but which is sector specific. So while we are building the content, and believe me, it will not be very easy for a CISO to get that certification, which is domain specific. If you're a CISO or a power sector, uh, you will have to have a fair amount of expertise to be able to get that certification. And uh, where, we, where it's stuck up is that we are wanting this to be recognized internationally. Just having a certification which is uh, printed on a piece of paper has no value. So we're wanting this certificate to be internationally recognized. Now these are some of the steps which the uh, government is uh, thinking about. And uh, last statement that I'll make is, gentlemen, please understand as a CISO that security and convenience is a zero sum game. You can either have security or have convenience, you can't have both. So when you, when you strictly enforce your security guidelines and rules and rule sets, It'll inconvenience people, especially the senior lot will resist. 
but then that's it gentlemen it's your call security plus convenience is zero thank you